New York, 1852. This city of half a million is a magnet for immigrants fleeing war and poverty in Europe. But in the New World, conditions are hard. People share the streets with horses. The latest luxury, running water. Most hospitals are more like poorhouses than centers of care. Anesthesia is still experimental. X-rays and even aspirin still decades away. To reach out to those in need, in 1852, a group of Jewish philanthropists, led by 72-year-old Samson Simpson, founds a new institution, the Jews' Hospital. Each religion in those days is expected to care for its own. In time, the hospital will be renamed the Mount Sinai Hospital and will care for the sick and injured no matter who or where they are. In its first full year of operation, the hospital admits 216 patients, people from every walk of life, and spends just over $5,000, about as much as it spends every three minutes today. 1861, the outbreak of the Civil War. Mount Sinai board members and doctors, among them surgeon Israel Moses, volunteer their services, something the people of Mount Sinai will do again and again in times of crisis. But the hospital wins its greatest renown from an extraordinary record of medical innovations. 1878, Mount Sinai opens the first department of pediatrics in a New York general hospital. Mount Sinai doctors make the discoveries that make blood transfusions possible. In 1907, how to test compatibility between recipient and donor. And in 1915, how to stop stored blood from clotting. In the 1920s comes the first cardiac stress test, the Master Two-Step designed by Arthur Master. And the Schwarzman phenomenon, the principle that underlies the skin tests used to detect tuberculosis and allergies. It's been said more diseases are named after Mount Sinai doctors than those of any other hospital. Brill's disease, Berger's disease, Crohn's disease, Epstein's disease, Moshkowitz disease, Tay-Sachs disease, and many more. As the skills keep on growing, the compassion does not waver. World War II, Mount Sinai doctors and nurses serve on the front lines. In North Africa, they set up a thousand bed hospital with a thousand more beds in tents. And they will follow our troops to Italy and then into France. We continue to do an almost impossible task, nurse Ruth Chamberlain writes home, with good spirit and excellent accomplishment. I wish I could tell you the number of patients we care for and the things we do over and above requirements. We resolve this year to hasten our pace and keep up our good reputation till this thing is over. In the post-war era, Mount Sinai continues its leadership. To deepen its commitment to education and the basic sciences, in 1968, it opens Mount Sinai School of Medicine bringing Mount Sinai to the forefront of the modern world of molecular medicine. Today, Mount Sinai doctors and scientists are advancing the frontiers of medicine further than many of us have ever dreamed possible. Robotic surgery, science fiction just a decade ago, is now a reality. And scientists are searching for ways to grow new tissue to replace what's been lost to disease. These mouse cells, once simple and undifferentiated, have been taught to become heart muscle cells. At Mount Sinai, the possibilities are boundless. From the laboratory to the bedside, the people of Mount Sinai are heirs to a proud tradition. They will continue their vital mission and carry forward the belief that compassionate care and extraordinary medicine go hand in hand.